And here's the last video I'm going to do for this uh, Singer 603. I wanted to show you the inside with the machine working, kind of a tour of the, of the inside. Um, there's a lot of videos on YouTube that show everything about the unit, the tension, the bobbin winder, stitching, but I've, I've loosened some top screws here. And you just lift the top plate off just like that. There's, so there's two screws. And you just loosen them and the whole top plate lifts off. And inside the nose cover is a diagram picture of how to thread the needle and the bobbin. And if you want, you can gently lift this off and pull it out. It's on a couple of, I can't see what I'm doing here, it's on a couple of uh, pins. I just pin in here and there. So I'll get that out of the way. So here's a, here's a top view of the mechanisms. You see the uh, horizontal upper shaft here. The motor, top of the motor is right there. It sits uh, vertical. And the steel worm gear on there contacts a fiber gear on the hand wheel. And that hand wheel is bolted to the shaft. So that's what turns all these shafts. Here's the upper steel gear. Uh, concentric gear with a shaft I'll show you later that goes down to the bottom. This is the small cam stack. This is the zigzag cam. Let me just pull it right off. They just pull off like that. You can see this is the swing mecha mechanism for zigzag stitching. This is going to rock the needle, this part. This is going to turn gears and make the needle go up and down. And I'll show you all this running. But when, you, um, when you're up here and you're, you're changing the settings, you see it's moving these mechanisms. So there's a 3-width stitch, 4-width stitch, 5-width. And this, this arm is what will control the needle to swing back and forth. Uh, if we come up to the front of the unit now, in the head, you see the presser bar. It's very heavy duty. The needle bar. Back in here are the mechanisms that will go to make the needle go up and down. You see a counterweight back there to do that. The uh, when I put it in zigzag, you'll see that that this is what makes the the helps the needle swing back and forth. There's the lifter. There's the bobbin holder. So let me let me run this slowly here, and uh, we'll have the videographer go over it and kind of show what. There it goes. You see that front end as it lifts the needle up and down, going around. Let me put the cam back on here and we'll do a little zigzag. I'll put the zigzag all the way to five so you can really see the, the swing of the needle. You see the front end and the needle bar and the bobbin down below, down in, down in this area, you'll be able to see that needle bar swinging back and forth. See it swinging there? Yeah. And of course when you lock it back into straight stitch, it just goes up and down. Now, you can see the motor gearing up here. The 
end of the shaft. The motor turns that steel worm gear directly to the hand wheel, which goes directly to the shaft. This concentric, when you're watching this gear go and up and down, I'll show you the shaft below. It comes down and then there's a bottom shaft that goes over to work the feed dogs and the hook. Okay, so you get the idea of that. What a beautiful, heavy-duty, all-steel. I don't even know if you could find something made this way or what it would cost. Now let me turn this on its back here, and I'll open up the bottom, and we can see the <clears throat> we can see the bottom uh, in action here, maybe. So. Take this little retaining nut, and you want to get in here a couple times a year or more to, to oil it and uh, lube it, depending on how much you sew. So we take that off, take off this drip plate, just a steel plate that's lined with kind of a heavy duty felt. You change this bar to the here to get this up on an angle a little bit better. There. So this is the bottom of the motor with the commutator that's vertical right up to the top where I showed you that worm gear. This is the bottom of the shaft that's connected to that concentric. And there's a gear on the end of it, translate to this gear, and this shaft comes over, and that is just the two more steel gears, and that's all to just uh, run the hook, uh, the bobbin hook, around and around. And still, look at that, uh, heavy steel gears, see how clean they are, heavy steel shaft, two more steel gears. Uh, the newer stuff is all all plastic. Sometimes even the shafts are plastic. Um, if you're wondering, this is to raise and lower the needle plate. That's how that mechanism works. And then the uh, other concentric comes down here, and these two shafts uh, come over, and this is what moves the feed dog in forward or reverse. So let's let's just put a little power to that, and you can you can see everything in use. Try and go kind of slow there. So as that concentric shaft comes down and rocks this, this mechanism is what's going to go over and rock the feed dogs to pull in the fabric. And when you throw that lever up for reverse, it just flips the motion the other way. So this is kind of a counterbalance here. This is the one connected to the shaft. Runs the power. Uh, the worm gear coming down and the other steel gear transferring over here to make the, the uh, bobbin hook turn around. So you look at this, something built like in the 50s and 60s. Uh, if, it, if this thing is maintained, it'll just virtually run forever. Look, look at those steel gears, if you can see them up close. They're just beautifully meshed. They're made to uh, in pairs. And uh, after they were die cut and everything, they would take those gears, mesh them like that, and dip them in a vat of polishing compound and run them for hours. And that's why... It, when you service these, you never want to take the gears away from each other. If you do, you've got to mark them real good.